Okay. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, I was actually trying to add so many people. You're welcome to Relationship Talk with Abdelaid. It's a new edition, and I'm so, so, so happy to be here tonight. I don't know if my music is too loud. Please, if it's too loud, just let me know. If I'm not projecting also, let me know, please. Okay. Sorry, I have cold actually, but like I always say, the show must go on. You're welcome to Relationship Talk with Adelaide again. And I said, my name is Abigail, your host. Today, we'll be talking on a very, very important topic. And it's titled, Marry Who You Love. Or, Love Who You Marry. I don't know. To me, it's a very interesting, interesting topic. Because so many of us are going through so many things. So many things. And I would love us to, you know, pour out our minds tonight on the um, things that we are actually going through. You ensure you support people. Through this topic, you will be able to contribute into someone's life. Like I said, so many people are going through a lot. I, I hear so many things. You know, people call me to say so many things that are happening. And I'm like, are these things still happening? <laughs> but the truth is, things are happening. Things we believe we've gone through and, uh, you know, no one should go through them. You don't know things are actually still happening. So tonight, like I said, let's open up our minds for contributions, for learning, also for interacting and also giving our own contributions for our own advices. Tonight will be a very, very interesting day. We have two interesting people online tonight. I call them star guest like i said last week anyone co that comes up here will be is our star guest is my star guest so again the topic is marry who you love or love who you marry i want to ask what's what's love what's true love to you our star guest will be answering these questions but just for me to share my own little understanding i believe true love is a choice Anything you say I love or whosoever you say you love is a choice you make. So before going into any relationship, whether a friendship relationship, any kind of relationship, be aware you're making a choice. So whatever choice you're making, it actually counts. So I will be calling on to our first guest because of time. I have to be time conscious. I don't want to exceed our one hour. So quickly, I'll be inviting our first guest. Her name is Arewa. And when you see her, you know she's actually beautiful. So I want us to please hold on. Okay. While I invite our first guest. They can't join the group because of this type of group. Okay. The Facebook thing is... Um, well, I'm getting used to it with time anyway. Okay, I can't add our first guest presently. But I believe with time I should be able to, to add her. So like I was saying, true love is a choice. In anything you do, you make a choice. Okay, let me try to add her again. I don't know what the problem is. Okay, um, sorry Arewa, if it's possible for you to call, good, thank you very much, thank you. Okay, awesome. Okay, now I'm adding her, it's good to have you online. I don't know if my music is too loud, please just let me know. Okay, why we wait for Arewa to connect? Good, awesome. Hello. Hello, good, good evening. evening. How are you doing? I'm good. I don't. I'm fine. I'm fine. Are fine. You? It's good to have you online. You're looking beautiful. Yes, Happy birthday to you. I actually Thank forgot you. that you're looking beautiful. 
Thank you. Okay, so best advice. Yeah, best advice. That's good. <laughs> okay, so um, these are our first tag guests, and um, today is hello everyone. Today is our birthday. Please, if you could wish her happy birthday, I would love this. Aww. She's looking awesome tonight. You know. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome to Relationship Talk with Abby Light again, and thank you for having. Yeah, good. And like I started, I started with our topic, which is marry who you love or love who you marry. It's, um, mm -hmm. it's a deep topic to me. And um, our guest, our star guest, sorry to say, our star guest will be going on to tell us more about love. And any other question, please, um, we, could leave, we could leave questions down here. The music is a bit loud, sorry. Okay. We could leave um, questions. I will do something about the music. We could leave questions down here. Also, we could come on air not now after our star guest. I know we have so many questions we want to ask. And um, okay. I myself have so many questions I want to ask because of so many people have actually called to ask something that we would be pointing okay. out tonight. So okay. my first question is this. What is love? Oh, okay. Um, for me, love is is um is is something you can define with one word. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there are different definitions love, of yeah. love depending on what context you're looking yeah. at. But the the most important thing we need to know about mm. love is love is a, a feeling, okay. you know, that you have for someone okay. that makes you accept the person for who they have. Okay, and then there are three things that I, I um, would like to highlight about okay. love. The first thing is that it is commitment. Good. Commitment. The second is that it, it has to do with um, communication. Okay. And then it's unconditional. Yeah. So these, these three things cut across all the types of love that we have. The first is commitment, okay. communication, and it is unconditional. Now... When we're looking at, I, I, I would categorize love generally into three categories. Okay. We have agape, which is a God kind of Good. love. This kind of love is the love that God, you know, has for we as children. Yeah. And it, this kind of love is absolutely unconditional. Okay, and regardless of we communicating with God or not, He's always communicating with us, you know. And it's a love that is built, based on giving. You know, if, if you're a Christian and you've read through the Bible, you will see different ways in which God, God expresses yeah. love. And if greater love has no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. You know, that perhaps you could die for a, a good man, but, you know, for somebody that is not worth it, you would, you would not really consider giving your life. But because of the love God has for us, so I'm talking about Agape okay. now, the first kind of love, he commits to us. There is a commitment from God to us to, you know, keep us alive, to give us the hair that we breathe. He gives us the rain in season and out of season. You know, he gives us sunshine. He gives us, you know, he just is, is benevolent towards yes. us. And he gave us his son to die for okay. us. Okay? So that first kind of love is unconditional. Okay. It's not about your merit. It's not about what you deserve or what you don't yeah. deserve. It's not about who you are. You know, God just loves mm -hmm. you. And that's the first kind of love. Now, there is another kind of love that I call philia. Okay. That's the kind of love that exists between parents and their children. It, you know, between a brother and a sister. Mm -hmm. Between two brothers. Between siblings. It's the kind of love you can associate to the family settings. Mm. Sorry, okay. Okay. You can't hear me. Oh, okay. Please let me adjust my I, volume. Someone says it can't Okay, be I reduced the volume of my music. I don't know if that's a problem. Okay, can you hear me now? Please, if you can hear me, let me know. Okay, so the, the, the first um, love, like I said, is agape, the God kind of love, the love that is unconditional, yeah. that does not have any requirements. You don't need to do anything to be qualified. You don't need to be beautiful or ugly. You don't need to be nice or you just. Okay, so. That is the first kind of love. Okay. The second kind of love, like I said, is the love between parents to their children, between siblings, okay, between a cousin. You know, this kind of love is, is a love based on the fact that we are affiliated. You are my blood. Yeah. So I 
out for you. I watch your back and okay. all that. You know, and this love again. If you look at this type of love, it has the three requirements. That is, it has commitment. Yeah. It's you know, it's unconditional. Okay, okay and there is communication okay. because I have to communicate that love okay. to you. That's why a mother can you know leave her career and face raising her children. Yeah, communication. Okay, that's why. That's why um, you you hear siblings say, "I gave up my education because I wanted my True. brother to yeah. have a better life." Mm -hmm. That's the kind of love we're talking about in okay, media. Good. Now, the, the third category, according to me, okay, and according to some Greek philosophers, is the eros kind of love. Yeah. Eros. Yeah. It has to do with emotions. Okay. From the word erotic. Mm. Okay, this kind of love is the love that exists between lovers. Okay. You know, this kind of love is the one that we are now, if I can say, it's the one we're looking at when we're talking about marriage. When we're talking about romantic relationships, okay. when we're talking about dating and courtship, okay. this is the kind of love that you know brings us on this platform. Mm -hmm. So this third kind of love is the is the love that stems from attraction. Okay. For this love to actually exist, there has to be attraction. Okay. You have to be attracted to the person. Okay. And then if you're attracted but you don't communicate, then that love will Certainly, not stand. Yeah. So you have you have to communicate what you mm. feel. If you don't communicate, it becomes infatuation. True. Okay, something happening from a distance. I start talking okay. you, but I'm not talking to mm. you. That one is dangerous. But when you're communicating, that's when that love now becomes yeah. established. Okay, so that's the third kind of love. And that's what exists between lovers, between married couples, between people in country. Okay. So I think that's what we're actually focusing so the, on. Yeah. And this kind of love, you know, for this kind of love to work, it has to be unconditional. Okay. It, you have to accept the other person for whom they are. A lot of us make mistakes with this kind of love because we want to change the other person. But for this kind of love to work, you know, in a relationship, you have to accept the other person for whom they are. You have to be willing to give to the, the other person. Okay. So it's a it's a give and take, and yeah. take relationship. Okay. Yes, it's not it's not a give give. For the first kind of love, agape, God gives us regardless of if we're giving back True. to people. If we're even, yeah. even, so people don't even believe that God exists, you know. But come on, God is God is actually benevolent in oh, His love. But yes. when we're talking about arrows, the kind of love that exists between couples, it's a give and take relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay? I so can, I think, yeah, okay. um, I don't know if, if you're satisfied with my definition. I am. And the last thing about arrows is there is chemistry. Good. So it's it's a love that has to do with like like I said it's erotic it's emotional. Mm. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, ma. Like I said earlier on, um, we all have our definitions to love. I started with true okay. love is um, a choice. So it's my own part of um, okay. definition. You have yours, okay. and so many other people have their own type of definition. So we are actually okay. going somewhere tonight, and I want to know what okay. is marriage to you? What do you think marriage is? Okay, for me, marriage. Okay, marriage is a relationship between two adults. Okay, for me, it's a union between two adults, and based on my belief and based on my perspective, it is a kind of relationship between a man and a woman. I'm sorry if you if you have any other type of way of looking at it. Okay, but according to my definition, okay, marriage is a union between a man and a woman. Okay. Okay, so the, the kind of love we we're talking about in marriage is eros, yes. the kind of love that, that has to do with emotion, you know, the kind of love that has to do with giving, that has to do with commitment. Okay. So marriage is a union between two adults, okay, who are committed to living with each other. Okay. Yes, you know, when you come together as two people and then you become one, you become unified. So it's also a relationship, a union that has to do with, like I said, it's a union, yeah. so it's fusion that that is brought about by unity okay and that's the core of, of, of marriage okay i wouldn't say the core of a relationship is the core of marriage unity okay is the core of marriage so like my auntie will say if they call you and they say your husband is um at edbeda for example i'm just using that or let's say in Paris, your, your husband is at guard the guard the law or something you don't argue this kind of unity you just oh okay you know, even if you did not know that it would be at that location. Okay. But it's the kind of love that is united. When the, the man is saying, sit down, 
especially in public settings yeah. even if you disagree you disagree to agree but the kind of love that is unified it, it has to do with the unity of the, the two people coming okay. together to become one so it's like a fusion okay. okay so for me like i said marriage is the union of two adults a man and a woman okay so for me that okay thank you very much ma like um since we're talking of marry who you love or love who you marry my next okay. question is okay. if you were given just two choices to marry who would you pick the person you will love or the person that actually loves you more okay um i will take this question from this angle okay, okay. then um, jesus christ said that you cannot have two masters okay. you will love one okay. and you would hate the exactly. other okay so okay so when we're talking about loving two people and having to choose right you, you have to choose between two people the person you love or the person who loves you. Yes, yes. Right? Okay. Now, we're going to look at it this way. The person that you love, mm. does this person love you back? Okay. Because, like I said, marriage has to do with, has to do with agreement. It's something that, that you occur based on unity. Okay. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So, if you love somebody, does the person love you yeah. back? For example... I can love somebody that does not even know I exist mm -hmm. from a distance. Sure. You understand? But if I love somebody and the person loves me back, then we can actually talk, it, talk about marriage rather. Okay. Okay? So if somebody loves you at the same time, mm -hmm. if somebody loves me and I love the person mm. back, then we can talk about marriage. Okay. Okay? But... Now, I'm going to leave it in two perspectives. When I was very much younger, I had this elderly woman advise us young girls. And she always told us, don't marry the man that you love. Marry that the loves man you more. that loves okay. you. Okay. So, that's why I said I will talk about it in two perspectives. Okay. The first is, the person you love, does the person love mm -hmm. you back? Because if the person doesn't love you back, there's going to be friction. The other part is the person that loves you do you love that person back so it's we are not talking about reciprocation remember i i said if you love somebody the person has to love you marriage heroes the love between the love that exists between married yeah. couples is a give and take relationship mm -hmm. okay so when you now say should you marry the person that loves you as a lady okay if somebody loves you okay and you know that you can find it in your heart to actually love this person and you allow the person to show his love for you. Okay, so I would advise that as a lady, you marry the person that loves you. Okay. As a lady, you should marry the man that loves you. you follow me really now, the reason I'm saying this is because... The reason I'm saying this is because as human beings, okay, as women... Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah, yes, I can hear you, but people are actually complaining they can't see here so i don't know if it's from my angle or yours oh okay my volume is at this highest Same so here. i don't know please let's have feedback if you can actually yeah okay it's actually possible it's their network so let's just continue oh you can okay it. good thank you very much thank you okay so i said that I said that in a relationship, a woman should marry the man. Mm -hmm. I'm listening, sorry. When you marry the person that loves you as a woman, because of the kind of uh, 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 wiring, if I may say that, you know, even in the Bible, the, the, the Bible did not tell the woman to love the man. The Bible said the woman should respect her husband and the man should oh, love good. his wife. Thank you. Okay, so that is why I would say a woman should marry the, the man that loves you because when a man loves you, he would command your respect. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? When a man yeah. loves you, he will command your respect. But if you twist it the other way around and you are the one that is head over heels in love with a man that does not love you or that does not know that you exist, then there is going to be a problem. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Because you are not the one... You are supposed to be giving this man your respect. Love is not enough in marriage. <laughs> you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Love it's is not... Marriage, marriage has different components. Yeah. 
like I said, the ultimate component in marriage is also unity. Love is a portion. Love has its own portion marriage. in marriage. It's a lot like um, I read something online while I was researching this topic, and it said survey shows that eighty percent of couples in America show um, say that they marry because of love. Okay, so if you're marrying just because of love, at some point the love would be tested Certainly. because there is there is there is um, there is what we call the uh, should I say infatuation, just attraction, and then there is love, there is chemistry. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're talking about heroes in itself, there is just chemistry, something that just comes and then lingers for a while and leaves. And then there's another relationship that can actually stand the test of time, that can stand the storms. So if you're marrying just because of the feeling of the chemistry, then there's going to be a problem. Yeah. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So we should marry as a lady, I would say, marry the man that loves you. Okay? And as a man, my advice is for you to marry the woman that respects you. That is ready to submit to you. That is ready to submit to you. That is ready to yield to your authority as okay. a man. A woman that, when, for example, the, the, the child does something wrong in the house and you correct that child, that woman will also correct that child. Because I've had um, situations mm -hmm. where a man is chastising the mm -hmm. child and the woman is like, ah, do that, yeah. what did the child did is there's nothing wrong with what the child did. And in that situation, there is division. Yeah. So a woman can say, a woman can say she loves, mm -hmm. but not be respectful. You understand what I'm saying? So that is why a woman that respects you, if you love a woman and you love her to the point where she is able to respect you, then that's the kind of woman you should marry. And that is why you realize that sometimes men will say, uh, there is something about this person. You know, there is something about this person. Or when I met this person and when we started cutting, I just realized she's the person. Yeah. What they see in that woman that made them make the decision that this is the person is the respect they are able to command mm -hmm. from the woman. And the truth is that when a man starts to show you love as a woman, respect would grow. If you understand yeah. what I'm saying. Your respect for that person and you'll be able to reciprocate that love. Mm -hmm. So it is... Would I say it is not hard for a woman to love a man that loves her? Good. It's it's by default. By okay. default, if a man loves you, a man loves you, and for example, he has all the qualities you want in a man. Even if it is not somebody, and that is why in the, in the in the olden days, um, arranged marriage actually worked for some of our of our parents mm -hmm. because the women the women in in some of these relationships got to realize that these men actually could love them and were providing for them and showing them okay. love. Yeah. And then they, they were able to command their respect. Mm. And as a result, the union, you know, the, the, the marriage could work. Mm. Okay? So that's my answer to that question. If you're a woman, you okay. should marry the man that loves you and commands your respect. And if you're a man, you should marry the woman that you love to the point where she is able to respect mm. you. Okay, thank yes. you very much, ma. Um, because of time, we'll be rushing to our next question. I'm saying, why does okay. communication die gradually in a, in a relationship or in a marriage? Why do communication die okay. gradually in a marriage? In a home? Okay, um, for me, the reason the major reason why communication would die in a marriage is when the arts are being piled. What do I mean by arts are being piled? Um, last week. He did not um, clean the toilet after using it. He got me hungry, and I didn't say anything. Okay? The, the Two weeks ago, he commented about me having weight. And I didn't say anything. Okay? I made my hair, and he didn't compliment me. <laughs> um... I was, we were coming from church. I was carrying a, a baby and I'm pregnant and he could not even carry my bag and I did not say anything. Now we begin, to, as women, for example, we begin to pile the arts. We don't talk. And some women actually, this actually happens over time. So this is, me, for me, the reason communication damage only is because we pile wrongs. We don't tackle it when yeah. it comes. We you know we allow it to, 
to accumulate. So we have a book where we write the, the <laughs> things that the person does. And another thing is for, for marriages, I realize that when we start staying together, when we start living together, sometimes we tend to neglect the things that are important in the relationship. Mm -hmm. We tend to neglect compliments. Yeah. Okay, and sometimes women will take the time in front of the mirror because we want to look good. Yeah. Some men actually think, oh, she wants to look good because she's going out. But the truth is that she wants to, most of the time it's because you want to look good so that when they see you outside, they will say, ah, ah, that is this person's yeah. wife. And then you, sometimes some women will come back from work, they are tired, but they will not wipe the makeup. They will wait till their husband comes <laughs> just because they want him to see you know, how beautiful they look and all that. And then maybe the man just comes in and the next thing is, where is my food? Mm -hmm. He's not looking at your face. He's not saying anything about yeah. the makeup. And you're like, hmm. You start piling it up gradually. So when we pile out, and the same thing happened to the men as well. Some men would, some women are not uh, appreciative yeah. enough. Okay, so you, you you need something and then your man volunteers to go and get it. Mm. Okay, and you just see that he's doing his job. Okay, he buys you something and you feel it's too small. Mm -hmm. You okay, probably you need a phone and you feel ah, if mates are buying after all, somebody told me the the husband got her an iPhone 10. Why is he getting me an iPhone 6 or why is he getting me an mm -hmm. iPhone 7? Why you know, so sometimes we, we tend to neglect the simple, simple things. Yeah. Yeah. Then another reason why I think communication dies in a relationship is because some men actually do not understand the nature of women. So some men see the women as they complain. Women, we are wired to talk. If I can use that word, we are wired to talk. And if I talk to you and you, you respond to me like a man sometimes, it will stop me from talking next time. Now, I'll give a, a typical example. Two men, when two men are talking, they are looking for solution. You know? So there is this issue I'm having at work. This is two guys having a conversation now. The other one said, okay, so what is it? Is it with your boss? He was trying to find out, is it with your boss? Okay, another colleague um, on the project you're working on. And then, as you're telling him, he's looking for a solution. Okay. okay? But when two women are talking, mm. they are talking not because they want a solution, per se, but because they just want you to listen to them and to tell them, ah, you know, just empathize. Yeah. Yeah. And so that empathy alone it's would okay. help to go along with but now, when a woman talks the first time, okay, and you put on your thinking cap as a man, instead of listening and you start looking for a solution, she might actually want the solution, but she also wants you to yeah. listen. So if she, she's, she, and that's why some women have best friends outside their marriage. Okay, okay. You know, mentioned Because this. they have okay. somebody, yes, they have somebody they are talking to who is listening to them and who is not you know saying ah why would you do that it's your fault you know it's not the person is not blaming them it's not quick the person is not even saying don't disturb me mm. so i have a lot of friends i have gist partners when they call this person they will just talk and talk and talk and talk and sometimes the man will be like ah you are not even coming inside the room like ah, i'm talking with this my friend there is a okay. gist and when that starts to happen in a marriage mm. the, there is a drift yeah. there is a shift yeah. So the instead of you to talk to you to each other as partners in that relationship, you start looking for the person to talk to outside the okay. relationship, and then communication begins to die gradually. Right. And when this happens in a, in a, in a marriage, yeah. it becomes a, it becomes a problem until you realize that that problem actually exists, and then you start working, you know, to solve it. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, from what you actually said, I have a question. Okay. But quickly, I want okay. to just advise if it's possible for you to please help us to share. And like, I don't know, just to share this video so people can learn how to stay. So, yes, I, I want okay. to know, since you said something about friends in, um, in, in a home, I want to know, okay. what's your own take? What do you think about having the best friend also out of your marriage? What do you think about it? Okay, for me, I actually think your best friend, when you're talking about somebody you can tell everything, should be your spouse. Okay. In the very first marriage, the Bible says that they were naked and they were not ashamed. Mm. They were naked and they were not ashamed. Meaning that, you know, they knew everything about the other person. And the other person also knew, Adam knew everything about Eve and Eve knew everything about Adam and they were not ashamed. They were not hiding their bank accounts. They were not hiding their income. Mm. 
they were not hiding the the things they had acquired from each other. Yeah. Okay, so in a in a marriage, I'm not talking about a relationship when you're still cutting. Yeah. But when you are married, your husband should be or your wife should be your best friend. Okay, so when you now start having a best friend outside your marriage, that means that there is a crack in the world that needs to be mended. Because that other person that you are talking to, there is no you will call somebody your best friend and you not tell the person about your home. You will start telling the person, my yes. husband did that. Ah, okay, my daughter called me Shady. You know, and I, 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 I used to have one of those stories that my mom told us when we were young about. A lady that was always telling us, ah, my husband did this. My husband did this. And that she, at some point, she started comparing that. Why is my husband not doing yeah. this? And he gave me this one. He pays me salary. Mm. He does this. You know, she started telling. And then the day this actually came out was the day my dad went to visit their home and caught, saw them fighting and she was actually complaining about you know she used to tell my mom then that he gives her like ten thousand naira for example and then my dad went there just to pay a friendly visit and caught them fighting over maybe he was giving her two thousand naira to cook and it's not enough for the month and all that and my father came home to say why is your friend quarreling with the husband that she was complaining that he gives her two thousand naira and my mom could not say anything at that point she said she was shocked because she actually felt she was actually like not seeing some things against my dad at the time because she thought he wasn't giving enough, her enough yeah. while the other person that was she thought was confiding in her was actually doing it to cover up mm. for her own husband <laughs> so when you have things mm. like this when you start making another person a confidence in your relationship jealousy creeps in so many things creeps in you might not intend it to happen but because we are it humans compar comparison creeps in okay and if your friend is unmarried, for example, it becomes worse because that person will be telling you about a girlfriend, somebody that is not having a long-term yeah. commitment to, and then you start comparing, you know, your own with that person, and then you start giving information that you're not supposed to divulge. So as much as possible in, in marriage, we should try to make our spouses our best friends. That's my take Thank on that. Thank you very much, ma. Thank you very much, ma. Like I said, because of time, would... Um... Okay. These are live questions that, that they were actually sent to me. Mm. So I just want us okay. to take this, you know, a step at a time. Now I want to know, okay. for a, a single lady, someone is asking, mm -hmm. if, I, if I love two persons, who equally, if I love two persons equally, I don't know how possible it is, <laughs> but if I love okay. two persons equally, who should I get married to? Okay, so if it, it, the person asking this question, should marry the person that you respect yeah. man. you love the man but you also need to it you also need to be somebody you respect okay so you should marry somebody you respect and not somebody that if, if it's a lady that says she loves two people mm. she should look within herself to discover the person she, that she actually respects okay. the person that commands her respect okay. and that's the person she should marry okay okay because if you only marry based on love she should marry the person that she, that she respects because that's the person that actually loves her more, that loves her in return. That showing her enough love for her to actually respect and be able to submit to that person. But do you actually... So that, okay. Do you actually love okay, two persons equally? Is, is it possible? It's, it's not actually possible. That's why I'm saying she should look at the person that she respects. Okay. Because what that person is talking from, from what I can sense, this person is basing it on feelings and you don't get into a marriage based feelings. on feelings. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. You should look for the person you respect okay. because that's the person that actually loves you enough for, for the person to command your respect. Okay. okay? And then definitely you will love one person more. There is, it's not possible. Even Christ said it, you, you cannot have two masters. You cannot love yeah. two persons equally. Even, even um, when we're talking about parents and children, you don't love the two children equally. You try to, to, to rationalize and, you know, work mm. it out. But the truth is that there will still be one that is like your yeah. favorite. You try not to show it so it will not affect the other yeah. children. But it's always like that. So you cannot say you love one person the same way as you love the other person. Okay. Thank you very much, Ma. Okay. So it's my pleasure. Okay. For humans, okay. Before you leave... Um, I want you to have to okay. answer this. Is it actually okay for a woman to love a man? That's, is it actually right for a woman's love to be higher than that of a man? To be higher than... How, how do you measure the love that is higher? That's the question. How do you measure the love that is higher? 
And like I said earlier, marriage is not something you go into based on just love, attraction, feelings. I'm head over heels over this person or he's head over heels over me. There are so many other things, you know, that matters in a, in a marriage. Okay. But the truth is that if you are emotionally over, emotionally attached to somebody, okay. then you should also check your motives. You should check your motives. Because if you're saying you love the man too much, then it means he doesn't love you enough. Because men have a higher capacity at showing love, which is, is the truth. Men have the, a higher capacity at showing love. Women are able to show more of affection. Yeah. But in the true definition of love, in terms of sacrifice and all it takes in a marriage, men are actually more able to show it. But women are able to show more of affection. Because men are thinkers. Men would think, they would strategize. That's why sometimes when you're talking to a man or your husband or something, He's like, why is this one? Why is she thinking like this? Because he's strategizing. He's thinking about how to put food on the table. He's thinking about how to put clothes. He's thinking about so many things. He's not even just thinking about today. He's thinking about how to make provisions for the future. You know? But we are able, women are capable of showing affection. You know, the care, to comb his hair, to adjust his tie. Okay. That is not love. Let me put it that way. That is affection. That is care. Just because we are mothers. Okay. okay. Because we are mothers. So that, that, that's my opinion. That's my own point of view. All right. Thank you very much, Ma. So You're welcome, Ma. For you coming here. We appreciate you. And our guest yes, speaker, pleasure. like I said, her name is Arewa. Her name is actually Olamide. Olamide. And she's um, actually, she has a talk show. It's called Arewa's Diary. And um, she holds it every Thursday on Instagram. I don't know if it's possible for us to actually watch. We, 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 we learned a lot there, a lot, a lot. I was online yesterday and I learned a lot. So I'm Thank so you, grateful for, com for you coming here tonight. I've learned a lot from you. And um, Thank you. Ma. I hope next time when we call on you, you'll be able to answer our call. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much friend. for coming online. Thank you for having me, yes, ma. ma. Good bless, God bless. Yes. Good night. Amen. Have a Thank great night, too. Ma. Yeah, bye. Bye. Okay. Okay, good. Um, back, I don't know, for now, I'll be trying to connect our second guest speaker. Okay. I don't know if it's not possible to actually connect her. Would um, be going on air for those of us that want to ask a question, that want to contribute or anything. You're free to come online now because I'm trying to connect a uh, second guest speaker, but it's not working. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the problem is. It's not working. So, like I was saying, I'll be asking. Okay, I'll be answering questions here. Also, I have some few questions down here. For us that want to answer, we are free to come online if we want to. Also, we could write down there. Okay? Someone had, how do you know the man who truly loves you? Because these days, we have men that are pretenders. Okay. So she's asking, how do you know a man who truly loves you? Okay. Um, since our second guest is not available, I'll be bringing our first guest back online to answer some questions for us. I really don't know why I can't connect our second speaker. Okay, I'll be bringing back Arewa to connect online. I can't connect her either. Okay, like I said, I'll be bringing her, but I don't know why I can't connect her. So we'll just continue. And, okay, I would um, answer the questions I have here. Someone asks, how does it feel to see the person you love get married to someone else? How does it feel to see the person you love get married to someone else? And I'm wondering, why would you love someone you're not in a relationship with? Why were you going to that, that feeling of, you know, loving someone you're not into in a relationship with? I, I don't know if I would call that love. 
Personally, I won't call it love. I would call it um, infatuation. So many at times we are infatuated with somebody and we're like, I love this person. What's your definition of love? So before you say, okay, sorry. I, if it's possible for you to call in, because I'm trying to connect you and it's not working. If it's possible for you to connect, to call. Okay. I don't know. I believe you're still online. So if it's possible for you to call, I don't mind. So like I was saying, um, so many at times we realize we are being infatuated, but we say <clears throat> we actually love somebody. Like she said, there's a difference between, um, what's it called now, infatuation and love. But the thing is, what do we define? What's, what's our own definition of love? I heard of so many stories this week and I was like, no, I can't believe this is actually still happening. So many at times you are in a relationship and you know one is using sex. One is saying, if you don't have if you don't make love to me, I can't continue this relationship. And I'm like, how do they relate? What's the what's the relationship between sex and love? What's the relationship between both? If you're not married, what's the relationship between both? I, I, I personally don't see any relationship between sex and love. But I'll be having Arewa back online. <clears throat> but before then, I want to say something. Um, someone asked the question again quickly. It says, my fiancé got someone pregnant by accident. Do I continue with the marriage plans? Your fiancé got someone pregnant by accident. And you are asking if you can continue with the marriage plans. For me, I, I don't know. By accident, what do you mean by accident? Was there no relationship between both of them before, you know, the the fiance got person pregnant? Sorry, Ma, you're welcome back online, Ma. Thank you. I actually couldn't get my um, start, the second speaker online, so I said maybe you'll be able to help us. Okay, ma. But okay, my my um, battery is a bit low, but I'm charging, so I have to hold it in my hand. Okay, fine. thank you very much. Um, I have a okay, question ma. that says my fiance got someone pregnant by accident. It wasn't intentional; it was just by accident. So, do I go ahead with a marriage plan? Okay, our fiance got somebody pregnant mm -hmm. by accident, and she's asking if she she should go ahead with the marriage plans. Okay, what that means is that uh, our uh, uh, um, fiancé actually got married to somebody else by accident. So does she want to be the second wife? Sorry, that's the way <clears throat> I see it. Okay, so I think this is leading to another topic, which is sex. Okay. And we need to define what is sex yeah. here. Okay, so when you're in a sexual relationship with someone, you're actually joined to that person. Yeah. Because... Like um, the Catholics will say, when you're married, when you do the ceremony and there is no sex, there's actually no marriage. In, in Catholic parlance, we'll say until the marriage has been consummated through sex, then there's actually no marriage. So what it means is that someone promised you marriage, okay, but has gone to join himself to another mm. person. And this is resulting in the birth of another person, another individual. And it, it means that the person that is your fiancé has created another family unit with another person. So the question we should ask the, per, the, the, question, the um, person asking this question is, are you ready to be the, to be the second wife? Okay, so if you want to go ahead with the wedding preparation, that means you are ready to be the second mm. wife. You're ready for a polygamous marriage. And this is actually interesting because I, um, then when we, I think when I was in the university, I had a friend that this exact same thing happened to. Okay. The man, they had been cutting for a while. Okay. And then there was, you know, everybody in the man's family knows this lady and everybody in our family, even we are friends, we know this man. Okay. And they've been seeing each other. And when we used to even see them that this is one that if people are going up and down, before you give each other, before you get each other pregnant, people should just marry so that we know that you are married. You know that yeah. kind of thing. We used to jokingly talk to them like that. 
Then, then um, one day she went to to visit him, and she noticed that the mother wasn't as as receptive as he, she used to be. And then she, she started, you know, being curious. And then later, the man called the the man's dad called and said, "You are like a daughter to me, and I need to tell you the mm. truth. This man has gotten another woman mm. pregnant." You know, and that the lady came to the house and he could not deny it. And so the, the, the elderly man, based on his wisdom and, you know, experience, actually told my friend to move on with her life. Mm. That was his candid advice, mm. that she should move on with her life, which my friend did. And today she's happily married, you know, and she's, she's in her own home and she has her own children now. So I'm married to another person. But the truth is that if she had forced it, there are so many things that would happen as a result of that. Okay? The man would have a child with another woman who would become a single mother. And the, the probability is that he would probably eventually still marry this woman. That's why I'm asking if this lady in question is ready to be the second wife. And you know, they say a broken courtship, better. you know, is better than a yeah. broken marriage. Because it means that, another thing, this man is not the faithful type. Mm. Okay. Because if you actually valued, valued what she called, the, what she's referring to as their relationship or their, as their courtship, it would not go outside, you know, to start having relationships with another yeah. man. Again, it's my opinion. Some people don't see anything bad in it. But as far as I am concerned, I think if a man has gotten another woman pregnant, he's automatically telling you that I, I am not promising you faithfulness in this mm. marriage. This journey we're about to embark on, I am not promising you that I can mm -hmm. be faithful. And if a man has already told you he's not promising you faithfulness in a marriage, it is now your choice to decide if you want to yeah. continue or not. And then it also means that you should be a very accommodating person because there is a mm. probability that is going to take on more women or is going to get more women pregnant in the course of the marriage. Thank you very much, ma. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Thanks so much. I want to believe she is online to listen to this. Okay. okay. Also, I have the, the truth is that she would find she'll find her man out exactly. there. It just means With it's time. not a man. It's just yeah. a simple. It might be hard to accept because probably she's invested a lot of time and a lot of things in the marriage, but the truth is that or in the relationship, but the truth is that this person is clearly not a man, except like I said, she's ready for polygamy. Mm. Thank you. Also, for okay, for instance, if it's a man in question, whether you are in a relationship and um, your fiance now gets pregnant, as the lady gets pregnant for someone else entirely, you mm -hmm. know, what do you do? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's vice versa. This thing is simple. The truth is that even women are more tolerant to a cheating yeah. spouse than men are, even our culture. Is more tolerant than to a cheating uh, man than to a cheating mm -hmm. woman. Okay, so if if um, if I I I I happen to be pregnant for another man and we are not married, it also means that I am not able to be faithful. So if the woman, if you are engaged to a woman, some men will still go ahead. Some men might still go ahead and marry the woman, but the woman should not expect for, from from that kind of relationship okay, so much. Okay. You know, so if a woman too is pregnant outside of marriage, except maybe it's a situation, maybe she was raped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if she was raped and then she becomes pregnant, it's a different case. But if it is not a situation of rape, <clears throat> she was having sexual intercourse and sexually um, active affair with mm -hmm. another man while she's engaged to another man, it just means if the man is ready to accept her, he should also be ready to share his wife with it other men. So, yeah. Because there's a probability too that when they get married, there's a probability mm -hmm. too that when they get married, she will still not be, you know, satisfied with just the man. Or she <coughs> might even maybe at some point want to mm -hmm. divorce. So it's the same. Keep faithful even after they made the commitment. Okay. Thank you very much, ma. Lastly, sorry, um, just to know, do I get married to my fiancé? Mm -hmm. He doesn't gift me. And he claims he loves me. He doesn't give me, he doesn't share gifts. He doesn't give me gifts. And he claims he loves me. 
She's asking, do I get married to him? Okay, please, can you hear yes, me? Hear you. Is the connection okay? Okay. You're saying um, someone is asking <laughs> if should, she should marry a man yeah. that doesn't give yeah. her. Hmm. This is a tricky okay. one. Okay, okay. Let, let me just continue the question. Actually, according to okay. this lady, the, the man isn't working. She's working, and they've been together for a couple of years, but still he doesn't give her. And the funniest thing is this, on our birthday, the, the, the man bought a, um, what's it called? Shawarma. You know Shawarma? In, shawarma. He bought okay. a Shawarma. So this person doesn't give her. He claims he loves her. He claims he isn't working. That's why he can't give her. So what does she do? Does she get married to this kind of person? Okay, I think um, I have some questions that will probably help to shed more light on this kind of okay. question. Because the, the truth is that you cannot judge from a distance. Okay. If she's saying that the man doesn't give her anything, like, see, my, my, my father will say that your intention matters. Okay, okay? not the magnitude of the gifts you are offering. But the intention behind the, the gift. Okay. Then another question I also want to ask the woman is, does this man collect from you? Mm. Does he want to be in charge of your finances? You know, those are the type of things we should ask first. Um, um, I, I need to say that a man that does not know how to give, even when he doesn't have, but at least he hits, that's what right? I'm saying, yeah. He eats and he has clothes. He wears he has clothes mm -hmm. that he wears. He has a phone. And he recharges he recharges his phone. Right? Of course. And that means that to an extent, he has a, a kind of um he has a kind of uh, income that might not be big. Yeah. Okay. Okay, because the truth is that in, for example, in a country like Nigeria, it's very hard for you to survive without working. You might not have a nine to five, okay, that you are doing, but you would have a source of income no matter how small it is. And if you are able to give out of that little that you get, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? It goes a long way because the, the truth is that a man is, is designed, is wired to actually provide for the home. Yes, women support yeah. their men. Okay, but if you are marrying a man that find it hard to give you mm. while in courtship, because that is when he's supposed to be trying to get yeah. your attention. That is when he's supposed to be showering you with all the things that, yeah. you know, apart from love, calls, and all that. But if he's not doing that, when you're, when you're courting, then the person should check again. Because there might be things that are more... There might be more to that relationship than she's willing to okay. share. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Because no matter how small, we need to know if he, if he, he commits to the relationship. If, they are all, if she's talking about maybe buying her exo exotic gifts, but if he's giving the little he has, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Okay, I used to know a friend that was dating a man that was a photographer mm -hmm. at the time. At the time they met and he was doing photography on a very small scale you know and despite the fact that he was earning so little he will still give and he, he knows yeah. that it's not going to be enough for example she will make yeah. her hair he knows that what he's giving her is not enough to make yeah. her hair right but he will still give yeah. her as a sense of responsibility i know i'm supposed to okay. do this for okay. example but i don't have the capacity okay. yeah. to go the full length but it is 500 naira, and she appreciated it because she realized that out of the little he has, he was willing yeah, yeah. to share. Okay. You understand okay. what I'm saying? So it's important for us to, to, actually, to actually be able to define what she means that it's not, by it's okay. not giving. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. But he's not giving her at all. Like, he's not giving her mm. anything. Then she, she, the, she, the man is not ready. They are not ready okay. for marriage. Maybe they should still cut and then she should probably 
help him to get a job yeah, you know, try to true. help them to be financially okay. stable because the truth is that if the woman is the one that is keep gives giving that means she's going to be the one to pay her own bride price she's going to give yeah. for a wedding she's going to buy her own she's going to buy everything they need for the wedding and then definitely she would run the marriage That's and then it will have a, a it would have a ripple effect on the whole marriage so they should wait and then wait till he gets something that he's doing or that he can get something that he's doing and then she can now consider okay i want to marry this person or okay not. thank you very much ma we're actually running out yes. of time so i would have to call okay. this off um okay. okay thank you very much ma for coming online so thank you ma you actually saved me tonight yes our second guest i think she's online presently but we are behind schedule so we won't be able to continue um 